back. Hold on, hold on. I gotta pause my music. I'm not trying to get demonetized. Oh, man. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Trey Herrera. For those who are new, what are we doing today? Today, we are gonna try to finish up not finish up, but uh, get more progress done on the LSA GTO. We've ran into a small problem. Um, this morning I got here, I decided to pull the bumper off and uh, get started on the heat exchanger stuff. The bumper was abnormally hard to take off and that was a little strange to me. So I'm pulling it apart. Um, usually GTO bumpers are a piece of cake to take off. So as I'm pulling it apart, this is what I found. Unfortunately, he got a new bumper and uh, yeah the bumper support here is nice and bent up um i also noticed he has aftermarket um transmission cooler so uh to mount the heat exchanger where i'd like to mount it wasn't gonna work necessarily so i'm trying to make moves so i call the customer i let him know hey uh this is bent do you mind if i film it and do you mind if i fix it or what do you want me to do kind of gave him the scenario and uh he wants me to fix it so we're gonna cut it up. We're, we're gonna cut it up, fix the bumper back, uh, re-weld this thing, and then uh, we will mount the heat exchanger in a proper place. Now what I noticed, uh, first thing I noticed is uh, previous owner, so he didn't know about this at all. He didn't know not even a little bit about this at all. So previous owner cut this up here, right? Uh, all s must have ran into something here, but cut this side too. Um, the the mounting brackets they're aftermarket by the way um, but they work they work well we're we're gonna try to figure out how to make this work real nice I do have to go and pick up some material but the material will I think I'm not sure if I'm gonna cut it completely but I'm probably gonna cut a good section of it out probably like here here like here here and then plate it back probably notch it for the heat exchanger so it sits nice and flush back in here I had to cut the tabs out of this guy too there we go it looked like oh geez power steering line was a little beat up too you guys can see that it's a little pinched in there it is what it is so let's uh let's get this thing fixed and then we'll address this next see this tab not too bad this tab was bent back just a little bit we'll straighten this up uh, it's all good we're we're in the business for saving gto so it's all good all right first thing we're gonna do i got my spud wrench on here we're just gonna bend this tab just slightly back be gentle, the whole thing will bend a little easy. They're not super thick metal at all. There we go. See, it didn't take much to bend it back. It's now fairly straight. Bend this one just a tiny bit as well. But you guys can see the whole thing. I'm not really putting a lot of pressure on it, but the whole thing bends easy. All right guys, I have a serious question. What are you guys using to clean your parts with? I've been using Purple Power or Super Clean for a long time and it works, but it's still a lot of elbow grease. I'm curious what everybody uses. Um, would like to take down the amount of labor time on cleaning parts. Um, because I do not have a parts washer just yet and they're expensive, uh, yeah, I've been doing everything by hand. So what do you guys use? Let me know. All right, we got it all cut out. We're gonna plate it back with this guy. Ignore my finger. <laughs> Sand it down a, a bit, and then uh, clean it with some acetone because this is pretty dirty. So it's plated, now I just gotta plate this back here. Uh, straighten that out. Oh, much better. All right, I need to go get some material, some more material um, to patch this back together. So then this is nice and straight and then we'll be mounting the uh, heat exchanger, heat exchanger and the heat exchanger pump. So got to go get some material. We'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, day two. Um, I had to stop because that was a lot more work than I anticipated, but we got the bumper fixed. I did post this up on Facebook and Instagram. We got Jesus here. Um, what we're going to do today, ignore the coolant, that was a little bit of coolant from um, from the heads, uh, from the steam ports, so we've got to clean that up, but 
we got a nice aluminum drive shaft here that we got to install. So big boy, big boy Henson drive shaft. Then uh, we'll finish out with uh, finish out with everything else. We also have another GTO coming today as well. So we're we're the GTO kings. Follow us on Instagram. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, while I'm working, well, yeah. While Jesus is working on the drive shaft, I just made a quick bracket for the Mighty Mouse catch can. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually mount it on the head here, um, right there. I'm, I, may I may rotate it just a little bit. We'll see, I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm gonna mount it right there and then uh, we'll be golden for the catch can stuff. Stock drive shaft. Usually on the factory ones, these ones, the uh, carrier bearing always goes out, almost all the time. And then with decent amount of torque, the guibos go out. So good upgrade is this Henson one piece aluminum. But you guys could see the difference between uh, factory aftermarket. But surprisingly, factory holds a ton of power because I ran mine all the way up to 700 horsepower on the factory drive shaft. So just so you guys know. All right, we got the the catch can mounted um just roughly mounted for now uh, now we just got to run the lines but yeah i just made this quick little bracket it works well we're gonna tighten it up and then uh actually i gotta twist the catch can a little bit so then i could run these lines the reason i didn't want to run it over here was because once i run the heat exchanger lines um the cooling lines we're gonna have a whole mess of lines over here and we don't want to make it look ugly so this will minimize lines up here. Catch can is in, we're test fitting the intake. I will have to trim this back some so we can fit the filter in here and also the mass airflow sensor. Um, I'm actually gonna see if we could go speed density on this thing. I'm gonna call the tuner, the tuner. I'm gonna call Shane um, to see what he thinks, but uh, I think speed density would be a lot simpler to run on this and then we could do away with the map, which would be really nice since the IAT sensor is actually on the lid um it will simplify this even that much more all right guys i had to take a break from filming because i had to do this gto um this one got full coilovers and uh rev rev shift motor mounts so i had to do this today we got two inch drop all the way around it's pretty clean it's 04. it also has a bat wing uh lip that i have to install tomorrow so i'll probably cover that a little bit tomorrow but uh that's when that's why i took a break um where am i at um uh, dry shop got put in on this we got the injector connectors uh let me show you on this side the injector connectors so it converts from the ls1 injectors or ls3 injectors to the ls1 connectors on the harness so then you don't have to do any wiring which is really really nice um you can get those from amazon uh now i am fitting the intake i think we're going to do a speed density tune on this thing so the intake has to get cut down and then we don't need a map um i've been i've been slowly cutting away at this thing and making it fit but uh i did warn him about uh this intake boot may may not be the best option this will work for the time being but uh, when you get a chance you want to do some sort of weave silicone so it doesn't collapse under under throttle so uh just fyi for anybody who's doing this um but yeah so this let me get it put together and i'll show you guys all right so it'll go something to this effect uh, just like this and yeah so i do have to trim this a little bit um the intake is actually pushed all the way up here and uh once i trim this down then it'll be golden but uh that's what's going on then as of tomorrow i'll be doing the fuel pump on this and then uh fuel pump and then the rest of the plumbing for the heat exchanger and then tunings after that so um we made a ton of progress but yeah uh lots to do still